Welcome back. Today we're going to do a quick, uh, semi-quick tying tips uh, on tying multicolored deer hair heads. Now I'll start this out by saying this is absolutely not necessary whatsoever. It does not catch any more fish. It does not, it may catch a few more eyes of the fishermen, tires especially. Um, I have no data that suggests it catches more fish. But to be honest, I mean after you tied five, six dozen all of you kind of get a little bit tired and want to mix things up a little bit. So I put a couple of these together today. Um, been messing around with these this morning. So I'm going to go ahead and start this one. This is going to be like an olive and rust color. This, these are dungeons here that I have started. Um, I'm going to throw this in the vise and get my marabou going in the right direction here. And like I said, I'm going to do this in a rust and an olive today. Um, just something to change it up. I really like this color combination. I don't really give it its due. Um, I don't really fish it as much as I should. Bass guys especially would love this. Um, trout, obviously. I mean, you're going to do well on trout with this as well. But this, I think this color would be a really great bass combo. But without any more rambling, we'll go ahead and get started here. I'm going to get rid of all of this. I'm going to put it behind a straw. That way my deer hair work will be unimpeded and I'm not going to cut off a leg or anything as always. Um, gel spun 200 for our thread. And let me grab my scissors here. There we go. Alright. So in order to do this, I mean, you can, th there's a bunch of different ways that you can go about this. Um, the way that I've found best is to find just a regular sheet of paper, fold it in half, set it down on your bench, okay? Now, what I typically do when I'm selecting my deer hair for a single color, I take a ton of deer hair for my collar. I still take a decent amount when I'm doubling these up uh, because there's going to be a little bit of drop. You're going to you're going to lose some in the transfer and all of that. Um, so make sure that you have enough here. Take my olive. I'm just going to clean this out, and that damn thing's going to fight me again. All right. So then what I do is I just take this, let me get that in the frame there, my center crease is going right there and I just move this to where it's about even on my center crease. Now what I'm going to do after I fix this clip here, there we go, I'm going to take my rust and I'm going to take about the same amount right there. I like the olive in this collar to uh, be a little bit more dominant. But then when I go into the head, I like the, the rust to be a little more dominant because the olive will take it over on this combination. So once again, we're just going to clean that out. I'm going to pick some of this out because I think I had a little bit too much. And then again, I'm just laying this right over the top right like that so there you can see the olive is under our rust and then I'm going to take just a little bit more olive clean that out like I said this is just a very little bit right there and I'm going to lay that back over now that it's sitting like that, all I'm going to do is take my paper and fold it over and I have a nice mixture of colors right there. If you want to, you can take and brush through that, um, really mix things up a little bit. But for this right here, I feel that that's a pretty good mix on this collar. 
I do it a little bit different on the head, but for the collar, that's what we're gonna go with. Now, because I have just a ton of it, and I know I'm gonna drop some, I'm gonna move off to the side here. And there we go. We're working with a bunch of this. get that all stacked up and clean and honestly the, the the time that you take in doing this the juice really isn't worth the squeeze it uh, it does take a little bit of time to go through these but I mean like I said I mean to do a couple of them just to mess around with uh, save you from the boredom of doing a ton of just one color eh, it breaks it up a little bit stack that really good. I'm going to get an idea of what I'm looking at here and I have just an insane amount of hair but I'm going to clean this one more time now that everything's together I'm going to have a little bit more drop take a look at it the tips are still even and then I'm going to I'm going to measure this out. There's a couple in there that I didn't like. I'm going to measure this out to where it's going between the point and the barb of the hook. I'm going to get rid of that paper because it's going to throw a little bit of white noise in there when I'm on that back camera. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this out, spin my thread, and then Get a loose wrap around here. A second. You can see that's starting to flare out real nice for us. And then a third. There we go. Flip this around from the underneath side. Everything's nice and clean. We've got no interference on that bottom. That side got a little bit short on me. That side got a little bit short. Yeah, I'll live with it. Nothing too noticeable. Alright, so now we're just going to go right through this. And you can see we have that nice mixture of olive and um, rust. Man, I'm losing my mind here. Got that nice mixture of olive and rust all throughout that collar. It's a nice little uh, color break up there. So now we're going to go into the body on this one, and we're going to do this much the same way. Um, I'm going to get this paper back out, find my center there, there we go. So same thing as before. Now what I said before is the, the olive will tend to take over this rust color, so I go with a little bit heavier on the rust than what I do on the, on the collar. So the body I want to be just a little bit thicker on that rust. Same as before, I'm taking a decent amount right here. And if you want to, I mean, you can mix this in your hands. Um, I feel like you lose a lot more that way. And there's a tendency, I mean, maybe it's just the way that I mix it and, you know, when I'm twisting it in my hand or whatever. Um, I, I tend to get heavier on one portion of the head than, than others. So this is the way that I, I typically go about these. So now I'm going to take and trim off my tips same thing I'm setting this right in the center just evening that out to where my crease is right down the center portion of the deer hair I'm going to take probably hmm, one and a half times what I took for olive on this, probably about one and a half times. Go ahead and cut my tips off.
even that up as best as I can. And then once again, I'm just going to throw this stuff in here. I'm going to flip this paper over. I'm going to bring it back on the other side. That's starting to get me a pretty good mix, pretty good color contrast for what I'm after. And then I just kind of flip this around in a little, I just kind of toss this stuff around, try and mix my colors up as best as I can. It's easier to do this when it's on the paper because I can keep everything nice and even for the most part. And um, I'm not transferring it through my hand trying to make a ton of different, um, you know, get my color just absolutely right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pick out a stack here. This is looking pretty good. This is going to be the back portion. This is going to be the, uh, the top stack that we throw in right here, right behind the eyes. Just going to give that a couple of taps to make sure that it's a little easier to work with. And now we have a nice mix right there. We have a nice center bundle to tie on. We're going to set this, grab it with your left hand, make sure you're in that center bundle. And then we're going to go one, two, it's starting to disappear. A third, pull down tight. And then that's going to sit right how we want it. And now I got this white in the way there, so I'm going to move this off to the side so it's no longer going to interfere with that back camera. So now again, I'm just taking a random clump right here. I got a little bit too much for this bottom. Remember when you're tying the dungeons, the bottom, it doesn't really have to be all of that heavy. Um, you don't need a ton of material in there to get you where you're going. Same thing again. Just give that a quick stack, even things up for the most part. And then we're going to throw this underneath. We're going to go one, two, starting to disappear, same thread path, and then a third pull down tight. Move all of this hair to the back behind your eyes. And then I'm going to go right around that eye, block the camera. I'm going to go around this other eye, and that just pulls everything in, sucks everything back for me. So now I have a clear spot in this front right here to do a complete spin on that, uh, on that front section. I'm going to do this again, a little heavier on the rust than the olive. If I had thrown enough on there, I probably could have gotten everything done with just the, just the first mix, but uh, I got a little bit short on my hair, so didn't quite have enough to do a good bundle there. So I'm going to just add a little bit extra here. I got rid of what was on there, and I'm going to put some extra on. Like I said, one and a half times for the rust is what you put down for the olive. Get this cleaned out again, and then we'll mix this up. Bring that into where the front camera can see it. And then we're just flipping this over. I'm going one, I'm going two. That gives me my initial mix that I want. And then like, just like before, I'm just gonna kind of roll this stuff around, mix it through as best as I can to where it's just completely random and heavier on the olive than I, than I wanted to, but I don't think it's going to make a huge difference here. So now once again, I'm just going to 
touch this up with the stacker. The spin is going to be a wild card because you're spinning an entire bundle. So how you look at it in, in here is going to wind up being different than what it turns out on the head. So we have just a big mix of olive and rust right here. Clear everything out of the way. Probably got a little heavier on the olive than I wanted to. And then same thing, we're gonna go one, two turns, thread starts to disappear, a third, just pull it around, there's your spin. Make sure that I didn't trap too much there. There we go. There's our spin, everything's clear. Again, I'm going to pull this back, just find my eye. One, two, three. Trim off the trim off the thread there. I'm going to get rid of that paper. Now, somewhere in here, I've got a comb. I'll just take this one out for now. Just brush this out real nice. Get everything nice and fluffed out. Make sure I'm getting rid of any hair that may be sitting in there or any. Um, loose pieces that may still be sitting in there. Do a pretty good job cleaning them out to begin with so it doesn't really get a whole lot but this just kind of fluffs everything out makes it a little bit easier to trim. So now we're going to start on the bottom. I'm going to try not to block this and still trim it half decent. So we're just going to make a pass right through that bottom section. I got my straw here, move that up to where it's touching the deer hair. And then I'm just going to take another swipe through this, clean everything up. Remember that bottom section's nice and flat. Now I'm just going to feather this down because I want this, I want this portion to not interfere with the body. I still want to be able to see the body on this one. So I'm just feathering that down to where it's out of the way. Everything's clear. We got a nice clean cut on that bottom. It's nice and even. Now we're going to shift to the top section and we're going to get our shape that we want and we're just going to make a nice smooth cut right to the tips of our uh, right to the tips of our collar the overall shape that we're after here I'm just going to feather this through Take the hook out of the vise here. I'm going to get this in the frame for the back, and then this stuff right here, I'm just going to take and trim the overall shape that I want. There we go. We're getting close. Flip this over on the bottom side. Once again, getting the overall shape that we want. Get that so I don't stick myself. And 
now I'm just going to come through here and just slightly touch this up. I'm going to feather this stuff going into my collar. I don't want it cut off completely. It just winds up having a little bit of a gap and it looks like a hard break right there. So this way if I just feather it into my collar, it looks like a nice smooth transition. Same thing on this side right here. And I'm going to leave that be. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I just want to trim this up real quick. There we go. All right. Pretty blunt section right there, so I wanted to just round that off on both sides. And the last thing I'll do is trim out my eyes. Making sure that I'm able to see them. And we're going to peel off this straw. Get that out of the way. Bring all of our marabou back around here. sitting where they shouldn't there we go there is the finished product of the multicolored deer hair head um, as you can see I tied these ones earlier you can tie a hundred of these no two are gonna wind up being exactly the same it's just so random how the the hair gets put on there there you can see the other the other three I mean they're they're not even well the, you're gonna have different spots and patches all over the place um, but like I said I mean there's consistently inconsistent on these is what you're after and um, I don't know it's just something to do like I said after tying so many of the same color it gets kind of boring so I don't know have some fun with it um, if you guys have any questions or comments leave them with me and I'll get back to you but thanks as always for watching and we'll catch you on the next fly